can do with all that fitness. <laughs> what do I need? Like yeah, 80 on the What, 70 is not enough? Yeah, it's not enough. It is enough. Go higher. Not when I can't snatch more than 120. I'll just ride the bike over there. Okay. Back. And you want us to just stay here? Okay. Yeah, that kind of fucks you over there. Run after me. Follow. Keep up with me. You're a bit, dude. No, they're giving 100%. Okay. It's just a wow. little slump. Jeez. There's too many other things, too many other variables wow. in the mix. What do we do about that? Just leave it? Or we'll blue matter go over top of it. We got that blue light in that and a really big stuff from the pool. Bar myself once in Someone's going to kill themselves. Can you go give them some guidance or? Yes, sir. Forty-five minutes. Well, it's okay. It's the first time. It's good. No, it's good. It's solid. We'll be starting in forty-five minutes. Are you gonna start doing run, swim, run events just solo as part of like you know throughout mm -hmm. the year? I'd like to. That'd be best case scenario. Will they be bringing a TDC or CrossFit? Probably gonna go with the TDC branding. So if the water if the water's this way, right? One through twenty. Nah, it's obvious. But it's fine, they'll figure it out. Where are they now? They're in the beer garden. All the athletes are in the beer garden. It's toasty in here. So it's kinda of warm in here, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. I mean it's freezing outside. It was freezing outside. We're gonna get outside and we're gonna shrivel. Is that how you're running cold like that? Oh yeah. Just shirtless, that's how everyone's going? Oh yeah. Yeah. That would I think it makes the most sense. And that's how you're running, Tachi? Shirtless? Just like that, that's the outfit. That's yeah, this is my outfit. I'm like I do like the bikini bottoms better. That's more a pop of a color, but they do right up your butt. They didn't give me bikini bottoms. I would have really appreciated that. <laughs> so when you get there, what's the deal? You only have to take your shoes off. And that's it? No socks. And you just go in. And throw your goggles on. Yeah. You ready? Always. You guys remember you need a top on when you take the field of play, which is when you walk out to the start line. <laughs> Everybody put your shirts on. Wait, why do you need your shirts on? I don't know. We really need our shirts again. Uh, apparently we're intimidating or something. I don't know. They just sent all the guys back to put their shirts on. We got numbers. <laughs> they have them on their shorts. They go first? I guess they're in front of us, yeah. So basically what you're saying is we won't get these jerseys back. So I hope you grab the one you didn't like the most. <laughs> so I remember, I remember in 14, I think it was, uh, when we had to do the paddleboard. Yeah, that was the 15. 15? I wasn't there. Way to go. When, my bad. when I came back out of the water, I took my shirt off. And then, like, I guess someone, like, jumped the barrier and got it. Are you serious? Dude, Chris Clever went and, like, fucked me. Really? Dude, she found me after the event. She was like, someone trying to steal this. Gone for it. I'm like... <laughs> Drop your yeah. sweat. <laughs> <laughs> over, bro. <laughs> you guys, keep your shirts on. We got a few minutes, all right? Just relax. <laughs> Scott's really <laughs> excited to take your shirt off. Take my shirt off. <laughs> Scott's like, I haven't had a car in three days. How close are we to starting? Do you know that? 12 minutes. Oh, I thought you were talking about the dudes in the front. Are you talking about these guys? No, good morning. Good morning. Why this spot? This is where the fastest people start. Yeah. In the back. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. We're going to start slow and then catch up. He's going to do the V formation, right? And no. just kind of like just plow through? Oh, yeah. He's the only one wearing a swim cap. 
<laughs> so they gave swim caps to all the guys, and Travis is the only one taking advantage of that? Yeah. <laughs> I guess like, so. Yeah. He's got a lot of hair, though. I suck at swimming. I need every advantage I can get. I don't need any drag up here. No, uh, he's really pulling it off. I can't sit next to this guy with a swim cap, so I made that decision inside. I saw him. I was like, nope, there's no way. No way. So when do they start, AJ? Same time. Like, soon. side is Yona Koski, first place, first place, and second place in a kick off the games in the past three years. Well, you got Josh Bridges with the first place and the very first that they've ever had in the game. Now on the women's side, it has been all Sam Briggs. Toomey's track background really is going to help her here. Pacing is what track athletes know. They know where they need to be. It's a new era of the CrossFit Games. Welcome to Madison, Wisconsin. And we begin with run, swim, run, a 1.5 mile run, a 500 meter swim, and a 1.5 mile run back to the finish. Coming out of the first mile and a half, it's just a quick transition for Matt Fraser. He was the first one through the run, and then it's into the lake where it's a nice robust 60 degrees. Nora Stotter making her way through the transition point. She is in the back half of the field outside of the top 20. Brent Bukowski well ahead of the field. Brent's head stays down so nice in the water. And you can see Fraser keeps popping out. Brent Bukowski is out of the water, but he will make the run back to the Alliant Energy Center. Christy Aramo is the first woman out of the water for the women. Every year we've done the CrossFit Games, we've always talked about how hot it is. But if it's really raining bad, how many of us choose to go out and train in that? Josh Bridge is way behind at this point. The sprint to the finish, it's event win number five of his career for Brent Bukowski. And Tia Toomey is going to pass Chris Yerimo. Tia Toomey looking to be second no fourth. How was that, Brent? It was good. Legs were cramping a little by the end. I, uh, people were giving me flack last year for letting Sam beat me. So I didn't want the girls to beat me at the end there. What was the water like? A little choppy. But it was nice. It was nice and cool. I was probably the ninth one to get wet. But after like a dive in and a few strokes, I was like fourth. And Frazier and I were the first ones to go around the first buoy. And he kind of stopped and looked back. And I'm like, go man, go! Um, I'm sure he's in here somewhere. He swam really fast that first buoy. My plan was to go slow to the first buoy, slowish, and then sprint after that. And then I just had the lead and just tried to keep it. When you saw this event, were you like, hey, I can win this one? Yeah. Yeah, that was the plan. I mean, based on how well I did in the long run last year and the swim last year, add those two together should have been a first, so it's good. It's pouring rain out here and it's cold. Do you feel that? It doesn't feel cold right now. <laughs> it might in a bit, but it'll, it'll be good. The bike track will be a little interesting. Hey! Are you surprised at how fast everyone went? Yeah. I was like, I'm going to sprint out, get a good spot, drop to the pace. Nope. It was like everyone was hooking. I'm like, I can't fall behind, so you just got to push the limits and see if your body will take you there. In years past, the events have been sort of ridiculously hot, and now we're out here standing and pouring rain. I like and it's this. freezing. You do like That's this? A, yeah, I'm from a tropical climate. Like, it's really humid and really rainy, so this is like a little like kid playing in the rain for me. Water was choppy. That was gross. Going out was, it was hard. That was like, I don't know, it felt like the hardest swim I've done. I don't know, I just kept seeing people passing me. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe we'll get them on the run. I mean, I'm not very good at swimming, so. Actually, I thought we came out a little slower than I expected, honestly. Like maybe there's like 100 meters of sprint. And everybody kind of settled into a pace knowing that we were going to be swimming. I think the pack was pretty close. I mean, when I was just taking out my shoes, the first guys were going in the water. So I think that was actually all out of swim. I mean, you can maybe get a few spots on the run back, but that swim was the difference maker, I think. If you can swim well, then you'll do well in that event, I think. What do you think about the bike event? I mean, it's pouring rain now. We're going to be slipping a lot. Those 90 degree turns, we were going slow when it was dry. You're going to be going really slow. Maybe it'll help me because I thought it was more aerobic than I expected. So like, if you're good in an assault bike, you're good at that because there's a lot of straightaways where you can just mash the pedals. And the skill part of it, which I thought would be more useful, 
really didn't come into play as much as I thought it would. How was that? It was awful. I got out of the water my right leg just yeah. locked up. I was cramping hard. It was bad. I was brush stroking like every five strokes. It was weird. I never uh, felt like that in the water before. I was like, fuck, I don't know what happened. I think I I tried to hold up with the front pack and I I had my uh, my split on my watch and it was a lot higher than what I'd been running. I tried to keep up with the front pack and it was stupid. And I, I feel like I blew out. Rookie move by a veteran. I fucked up pretty bad. I was crampy and I like I couldn't get Normally I try to catch people on the run, but like I couldn't. I got past them. Oh, that's so frustrating. That's like the one event I wanted to improve from last year. It was like fucking swimming event, and I just punted it into the stands. It wasn't nearly as bad as last year in the swim, but uh, yeah, it was spread out. I got hit. I got hit a few times by some couple girls and dude. I think it also might be these swimsuits, dude. Are super. It's a lot tighter than what I wear. My speedo is definitely looser. How long of a rest do you guys get? One hour, and then you get on the bikes. So it depends if you're first heat or second heat. If you're second heat, you get an extra half hour, which is nice. It's gonna be so different today. Three laps is gonna be hugely different. 20 people at a time is gonna be a major difference. All those tight corners, those like 180 degree corners in the switch box, when it's wet, like people are gonna lay the bikes down and take each other out. It's gonna be awesome. How was that? Well, that was fun. Just made a mistake, pacing-wise. Tried to keep up with the fast runners, but just destroyed myself on the first first 800. It's probably one of the last guys to enter the lake. But luckily, I'm a good swimmer, so I just tried to make my move there. I tried to catch catch as many guys as I could. And too bad Brent got too far away. I tried to catch him a little bit in the in the run, but I'm really not a good runner, so it started to hurt pretty quickly. Was it different swimming in this water? Was it weird for you? Uh, I think it was more it was better than the ocean for sure. Let's get out of here. It felt warm and there's no waves and it's just I kind of like swimming in a big crowd. Everyone's just kicking each other and pulling from the from the feet and it's nice. What happened out there? First run felt good and I've done that swim a million times. Uh, it's not the swim wasn't a problem. My legs got so cramped up that. I was pretty much swimming with one leg the whole time. Why are so many people, Josh said his legs cramped, Vellner said his legs cramped, what happened? I have no idea. I, I mean, I've done this workout maybe twice, and I finished it under 30 minutes both times. And I don't know, the insides and the backs of my legs, I, I could barely even walk when I got out of the water. It got to the point where I was swimming 10, 15 meters at a time before I, was, I couldn't stay afloat because my legs, I couldn't move, use my legs. I saw an image of you on the screen um, with a buoy and someone out there with you. At one point, I just couldn't stay up because I couldn't kick my legs. And it wasn't because they were tired, it's just because it hurt so bad and I, they just tightened up and I couldn't... So I was just like, I have to hold on, but... Did you know other people were cramping out there? I had no idea. I, like, I, was, I just kept watching people swim by me and swim by me and swim by me and I was like... It got, the thought went through my head like, are you gonna... Like, don't be that guy to. So I kind of just sucked it up, and I was literally, my right leg was straight, and I was just kicking with my left. What did you think about the run pace, the way people came out? People came out really hot. I mean, it was just like a, the first 250 meters was just like a full on sprint. Do you think that has anything to do with the cramping? It may have, but a mile and a half isn't that much um, to cause, I feel like to cause that much cramping. I mean, I don't, I honestly, I don't know what it is. Because I, I usually don't ever cramp. And when it happened, I really didn't know what to do about it. So I was very disappointed. That, I mean, I don't know. I got in the water yesterday, same water, and I swam, you know, I swam out, I swam back, no problem. And then you throw a mile run before it, and the swim takes you 30 minutes. It's just, I honestly, I don't know what happened. And how do you feel now? My legs feel a little like weak, but the cramps are gone. I kind of just wanted to do another event already. That was embarrassing. First event at the games, rookie year, tanked it. Well, at least you're in good company. Do you know where you're going right now? I think I'm going back here. And that's where the athletes go to? Yeah, we were supposed to be back very quickly. Is she waving us in there? That way? That walk we just did, do you do that after every event? I think so. It's a hell of a walk. It's a pretty long walk, yeah. Hi.
nice cool down, I guess. Even though that whole workout was a cool down for me. We'll see how this bike goes. Should be interesting with the wet course. I kind of checked the weather the whole time, like every day, and I expected it to be a little bit more humid. Um, but I didn't see that rain was in the forecast. I definitely didn't pack that much because I had to fly here instead of drive. Right. <laughs> but no, I was just hoping that they would provide us with that. <laughs> as soon as I got out of the water, both yeah. my quads on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. This is going to be a great mile and a half. Hello, Savan. Why, 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 why all these cramping stories? <laughs> I don't know. I've had definitely had plenty of cramps. Last year on the trail run, both my hamstrings seized up on the last... 200 meters, but today was a little sooner. So as soon as we got out of the water, both my quads kind of seized up a little bit. I mean, I probably started out a little hot. Me and Ricky went out like we were bad out of hell. It's just Ricky, Gerard. Okay. We took off pretty fast, um, and then just kind of try to hang on for a little bit. <laughs> Noah, did you have any cramping? Uh, I was on the verge, but never all the way. I've never heard about cramping at the games really from very many people and now everyone's talking about it. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it was the, the rain. I'm looking at the coach to see what he says, if he's got anything. He looks stoned. <laughs> Did Fikowski fuck everyone by coming out so hot? I've never been fucked by Fikowski. How about that? <laughs> In years past, the CrossFit Games have been a 90 degree fucking heat radiating off the ground and here we are and it's raining and cold uh yeah it's kind of cool i don't know i mean no pun intended but i am enjoying the change of pace because in miami it's so disgustingly hot too and humid so it's a good break from all that is your wife here i don't have a wife my girlfriend and maybe future wife is at regionals and stuff i like to find my girlfriend and kind of like zone in on that it just makes me feel good and running to the water i was able to get a little smile before i did the transition hop in the water and just kind of take a deep breath and go could you have gone harder i mean i feel like you can probably always go harder but i don't i don't regret the pace that i moved at there I feel pretty good about it could you have gone harder probably not not with both my quads cramping up like that um, but just remember, he said he got me on that last workout. I'm going to take him out on this bike race. Noah's got a shitload of Instagram followers, I think. He works out with his shirt off. I don't. Just and I'm pale, like Casper the Ghost. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So are you saying that's the trick? I'm just saying. But I mean, that's what Noah does. That's what I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Show a little skin. That always works. He said it, not you. You're a dignified man. I'm hearing a lot of people talk about how they're cramping and that they've never cramped before in their life. After this run and the swim. Yeah. And they've practiced swimming and running, I'm assuming. Tons. <laughs> My theory is, is that they came out so hot on the run. Yeah, I mean, it's a short enough distance that they're sprinting. You know, it was a fast run, so, um, you know, that maybe they were training longer distances on their runs and, and that they weren't, weren't doing a one and a half mile sprint. Could be, could be a little muscle fatigue, but surprising. That's surprising that they're cramping, yeah. And uh, what causes cramping? No one knows for sure. There's, every, there's theories on electrolytes and dehydration. This is too, too short and the pouring rain, no one's getting dehydrated. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different theories out there. And certainly these guys are mobile and flexible, so it's not the fact that they're just not stretching. And Damon to Owen? It, it is debatable. Good. The bike race. Yeah. Pouring rain. Yesterday they tried it in, in heat, and today it's going to be rain. Is it this, that's a totally different course? Different ball game, different gear shifts, different turn speeds, uh, jumping and carrying, and yeah, a whole different ball game. And you're not just a doctor, you're a CrossFitter. I would say I'm a CrossFitter first. <laughs> Did you have any cramping, China? No. I was Are fucking you? dying, though, in the second run. Uh, sure. That was definitely a 500-meter swim, if not longer. Do you think that people came out too hot on the run? Yeah. Definitely. It's a 30-minute workout. Like, it's not one in the first 30 seconds. When I heard the announcer go... And uh, it's only eight minutes and thirty seconds, and people are in the water. I was like, "Holy crap!" Oh. Yeah, we were booking. Yeah, like some people were in the water before nine. I think I ran maybe around like eight thirty, eight forty, and okay. then got into the water. Right. But yeah, I won't be that fast. Yeah. <laughs> 
you want right. to save it for the because I got passed up on the swim pretty good. Okay. Uh, but I knew that was coming. No, same yeah. here. Yeah. I can run. I can run. So, so. All right, bro. It's good. Yeah. Appreciate it. Good Thanks, luck. Thanks, man. <laughs> Did you have any cramping, Jason? Absolutely. For the first uh, 800 meters, it was more like cramp control, and then it passed, and then I was able to pick it up a little bit. But the do you normally cramp in training? No. <laughs> no. Maybe it was that uh, it's that whole uh, feeling of the games, huh? But I also normally don't lake swim either. Do you think it could be the bike ride from yesterday? I don't know. It could be, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with the air right now. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of nice, but. Then again, just running that maybe 30 or 40 seconds faster than you normally do on a, could just catch up to you in that swim, so. Any thoughts about the bike course, the cycle cross course being wet now? Just gonna be a little bit more technical, you know? You gotta really uh, keep it tight on the turns because it's a lot of turns, you know? But um, three laps gives you a little bit of a window to, you know, try to maybe pick off some people. It might give you a little bit of window to you know, if you eat shit a couple times, you might be able to pick it up and still do well. But you just got to be smart. And also, it's the first day of the games, you know, do well in it, but survive. And you have biking experience, right? Yeah, yeah. So the I mean, more treacherous the course gets, sort of the, the better it is for you, right? Absolutely. It keeps my mind in it a little bit more. Makes it definitely more fun because I love that stuff. So, but we didn't do anything like professional, but there was a good span of like maybe like six, seven years of just mountain biking all the time because I'm near a uh, pretty well-known trails in California and then Big Bear Mountain when that when it's summertime in Big Bear it's just a big old mountain bike amusement park if you will after regionals did your training change at all absolutely right off the bat coach had us active resting on Mondays and Wednesdays and then training Tuesday and then Thursday all the way through Sunday to get used to the whole schedule of four days on what do you think about this volume? You think it's going to be crazy for you, or you're ready for uh, it? Uh, ready for it. Something. The volume is something I'm used to. It's just getting the experience of being a rookie, as far as the environment, the times in between the events, and you know, just keeping myself recovered, forcing myself to eat, get shakes in in between, stuff like that. So what I'm doing off the field, it's going to be one of those things where I have to learn. Do you already feel that the competition, the competitors, are different than at the regional level? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, it's always that uh, four or five minutes before the event starts, you see everyone stop, you know, stop joking around, getting focused and ready to do their thing. Some people are out for blood, they're trying to make it happen at the games, you know, and as well as am I, but, you know, also trying to gain the experience and feel it out too. How old are you? 28. How tall are you? 5'11. And how much do you weigh? 185 pounds. <laughs> do you own a dog? I do. She's a beautiful puppy. Her name's Molly. You have a puppy. Puppy, yeah. She's 10 months. She's half Rottweiler, half Husky. She's really cool. She got a, a one blue eye, one brown eye. You don't have time for a dog. Get I, rid of <laughs> I saw you peeping me. Did you have any cramping? No. How come all the dudes I interview are like, I cramped, I cramped? I don't know. They're low on potassium or something? <laughs> I don't know. Josh Bridges said he was surprised that chicks were passing him up. Did you pass him up? Were you one of those chicks? Yeah, I actually chirped him. Uh, I passed him and I said, are you going to let me fucking beat you? And uh, and I heard him go, <sighs> Is that your story? Yeah, go ask him. Damn. I don't know why I said it. It, it kind of gave me a little bit of fire because I was like, oh, I'm fucking passing you. And then, uh, you know, I sped up a little. He ate a little bit of my dust. You look like a bike riding chick, you know? You look like a wilderness chick. You look like, you look I am, like, I actually am a woman of the wild. Like Jon Snow's chick. Egret, yeah. Except no one's gonna pierce me through the heart with an arrow. <laughs> Tell me about the bike event. Are you down or are you fucking scared? Well, today it's gonna be, it's gonna be real hairy out there, so. You gotta be careful, but uh, I'm not scared. Fuck if I, if I. Worst case scenario is I get a spoke through the heart. <laughs> could you have gone harder on that workout? I think my swim could have been better. Runs were great. My swim could have been better. How many games is this for you? This is my fourth. And what place did you take at your regional? Uh, third. Is it weird that two of the people don't stand on the boxes? Like, shouldn't they have five boxes? They kind of look like... No, honestly, in the grand scheme of my life, me standing on a box, my give a shit factor is like zero. Like, I, I save my fucks for what matter. Give me a couple fucks. What matters in Emily's life? 
Winning the games, I'll give you one. Yeah, doing the best I can possibly do for whatever task is at hand that I choose to, yeah, being authentic for sure. And uh, family, except to tell you the truth, I'm missing my brother's wedding to compete at this, yeah. You could rephrase it and say your brother is a dick for fucking having his wedding during Crossing He is. Beasley. And where's home for you? Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, what did you eat today? Pancakes and a piece of salmon. Pancakes? Yeah. Syrup? Yeah. I'm gonna carve up. Yeah. We're doing some gnarly shit. Yeah. And did you shampoo your hair this morning? No, actually I haven't washed it for three days. That's truth, right? Yeah. It's really, really thick looking. Is it? <laughs> Do it you want to run your hands through it? It looks later? amazing. I would, yes. Yeah. Okay, when I clean it. No, no. You can. What? It. Oh, you want it dirty? Just thick. All of you guys look like you guys are going biking. She looks like she's going surfing. Yeah, I am going surfing. Oh. <laughs> They cannot be padded bike shorts. I am no problem feeling our ass. I know. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't sign up for that. I did not. But I'm letting you know now. <laughs> Whose job is I gotta this? Go change. I gotta go change. Yeah, yeah. Go fast. So yeah. it doesn't matter if they have no branding. It doesn't matter about branding. You cannot have pad. Go, go, go. How was the swim? It was fun. Uh, everyone went out like a bat out of hell. So I didn't really know. I was. I was only like 20th into the water. I swam. Put in my shoes, I had no idea. St. Briggs flew by me. Come under the bridge and I saw like Matt, I saw like Ben and all them, and I'm like, hey, if I'm seeing these guys, I'm, I must be doing all right. So I just kept running. What happened before I got in here? Someone just passed around a thing of Ben Gay? Well, who has it on? <laughs> Somebody has it on. I think Josh was, che Josh. Josh was checking everyone for the butt pads. That's what, that was what's yeah. happening. I was just interviewing um, Emily Abbott. Yeah, she told me, yeah. She, <laughs> she had a good comment running past me. She's like, you better not let, or she's like, you're going to let me fucking beat you? I was like, <laughs> yeah, she said you gave it up. <laughs> you growled at her. Maybe. And then she passed you. What she did, and and she I was like, you. I chugged five beers before I started the race. Skill points. Skill points, Skill yes. Points. This wasn't a beer mile. <laughs> Can I see a raise so of hands for if you were passed by a woman? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every girl got in the water before me. I got elbowed by more but, women you know, I didn't mail. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Not worried about it. Is this like high school? Is this flirting? Yeah. <laughs> Is this flirting? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. What? No. <laughs> Go this on. Week we got yeah, hit man. by a, a lot of women. El the women elbowed, elbowed more than the men did. Well, who's going to win the Masters? Is it Neil Maddox or Kyle Kasperbauer? Ooh. That's good. I did so much backstroke back breaststroke. I was like, I wonder if China's doing backstroke. I'm doing it. Fuck it. I always do backstroke because I can't breathe. <laughs> then I was like on top of somebody. And I, was I didn't care. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I eating that was, alive right now. Oh. That was the Are there a lot of bugs out there? Oh, like mosquitoes? Oh, those ones. I'm allergic to those bites. They're like huge. Oh, really? You know, I think I can. You're so cozy. It's so cold out here. Are you going to wear that <laughs> in the ride? No. no. I'm going to take it off in a second. Yeah. Keep it on as long as I can. How was that first event? I've never swam with guys before, so that was interesting. But I think overall it was a better event for me than most, I guess. Because I've done triathlons before, so. And this is your? Rookie year. Yeah, it was my first year making it to regionals too, so. Yeah. Wow, yeah. so that's why I say double rookie. And what region did you come from? South, from Texas. And what place did you take? Fourth. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about this event. Yeah, I think it's going to be more fun, What, honestly. I think it's going to make it a more exciting event. Hopefully my bike doesn't fall apart like it did yesterday. <laughs> well, I went over one of the logs and then my chain just like exploded. <laughs> I was Can like, oh, avoid cool. That? Do you know how to avoid that? I think I'm just going to jump off and just get back on, honestly. So the logs on the second one are completely different than the sec or the first set of logs, so it was really sketchy. Who's here with you? Uh, Jared, my coach. Anyone else? Your mom? Um, my brother just showed up. My two brothers and their significant others are here. And then my dad and his wife are here as well. And uh, what do they think about this um, CrossFit happening here? Uh, well, my brother and his girl or his wife have been doing it for like six, seven years, so they've been wanting me to do it. Um, and then my other brother, my whole family is super supportive. They love everything that I do. So I was a gymnast growing up, so they always came to all my gymnastics events. So they're happy that I found something that's similar to that that I enjoy a lot. When you started CrossFit, were you doing it because you wanted to go to the games, or were you doing it just for fitness? 
fitness and then you're like oh this games thing looks yeah at first i was like oh fitness i can drink and work out yay this is fun <laughs> and then after the first year i was like oh i think i'm kind of decent at this i think i like it and then i started taking it serious <laughs> last year how old are you 23. And what do you do in the day do you have to work yeah i work full time it's easy. I work for one of my sponsors. It's like an online store, so we're just like moving and packing stuff all day. But it gets hard, like working, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, and then trying to fit in two sessions. But they're really flexible with my hours, and I can just go in whenever I want to. So that makes it a little bit easier. Do you train with any of these gals here? No one's in Austin, so I haven't. But hopefully, after this year, I'll get some opportunities to travel around and train with them because I really want to. I think it makes a huge difference being able to train with people that are way better than you or that can push you or at the same level. So it's huge. Don't do an Alicia Boone. What did she do? She said she knocked your chain off three times. I don't know on the event. Yesterday, she just went over the handlebars. Oh, I went over the handlebars four times yesterday. What? Yeah. Welcome back to the bike course. So, um, a quick little. Uh, uh, briefing on uh, how today's events are going to roll. <clears throat> so today from this main trek pick area, um, you will be giving the bike same exact frame that you used yesterday with the bike seat set already at the same height that you used yesterday. We took measurements. Good luck. Just keep mashing. Take the corners. Okay. Easy. You'll be fine. Okay. If your bike's okay, ride yeah, right, right to the gate. Same gym. She owns the gym. She looks like Spider Woman. I pay her. Yeah. <laughs> she does look like Spider Woman. It's event two cyclocross, three one and a half mile laps around this track. They have some interesting obstacles to deal with as well. It's the second time across the game's history that we've had athletes on actual bikes. This will be the first time the athletes have to hop off the bikes and transitions are key. We always talk about efficiency and transitions and this is where these precious seconds are going to pay off. This is where we saw the most wipeouts happen yesterday during these time trials. And somebody's got an issue with the bike. That's Kerry Pierce, the fifth place finisher from one year ago. Another one with issues. Cassidy Lance McWhorter, another issue. Casey Campbell. I'm surprised more bike chains didn't just come loose doing this. And those are some of the things you have to prepare for that you wouldn't really think about. Early dismount for Sam Briggs. And that allows Kristen Holt to catch up there side by side, getting back onto the bike out of that obstacle. And Briggs leading Norway's Kristen Holta. As you see the waving Norwegian flags, trying to will on Holta from second to first. Briggs with an issue on the dismount of the bike getting into that sand pit. She hopped straight off the bike and had her legs still straddling that middle support bar. This is where we've seen the most amount of passes. That sand pit has been a difference maker. I think Briggs is in a little too high of a gear for this portion of the bike course. Look how slow Sam Briggs' cadence is. She has the power, but that is taking a lot of energy out of her. So now Holta back into the lead here on the switchback portion of the course. This is the biggest lead she's had over Samantha Briggs. It's not very often Sam Briggs doesn't take first place in an endurance event, but when it happens, it's usually because of this woman, Kristen Holta. Kristen Holta was just technically a little bit sharper where she needed to be on the obstacle. I don't want to say this is surprising, but I didn't think Katrin David's daughter would be in the third position with some of the names we had in this heat. And the two-time defending champion will round out the top three in the heat. Danny Horan, she's looking very emotional as she makes her way down the straightaway for the final time. Very emotional year for her making it at regional. She's just squeaked in and had unfortunate circumstances. Take her out of the games two years ago, couldn't even start. So she is thrilled to be back. Did you stay on your bike? I didn't eat shit ever. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Nope, no wipeouts. Um, serious cramps. Calf, hamstring, like getting off to run it. I felt the three miles I just ran. Bethany said she, she kind of biffed it around a curve. Like, yeah, this one. <laughs> Beast. Three rookies in the top four of this heat, though. Let's just say that. 
But I was on a team last year. And my team, like my old team, is holding it down pretty well, I think. Um, they're going to do really well this year. So I've just like slowly each year like realized, like commit a little more, commit a little more. Training-wise, lifestyle-wise. I mean, I don't live like a wild lifestyle, so I love training. Like every day I wake up and that's what I look forward to doing. So it just makes sense for my life. Like it's what I love, it's what I have passion for. And so to do that every day is not hard. And it's not hard to want to do it. So let's make something of it, right? How old are you? I'm almost 30. And how long have you been doing CrossFit? June 2012, I walked into my first box. But and I did my first RX, RX competition in September of 2012. I didn't even do scale. I just like went straight for the, the meat and potatoes. And I was just like, yeah, this is badass. And what was your athletic background before CrossFit? I swam for 15 years. But then I took like five years and didn't do anything. I like tried to... Took like spin class. Taught, I taught Zumba. No, I think this whole. I taught Zumba before I CrossFitted. I think this whole games. I'm saying fuck Riley McKenzie because I'm like running and then she passes by me and then she's in front of me on the bike race. It ends today. All right, bring it on, Canada. No, no more. No more. Fuck. Riley I know, McKenzie. Too, man. <laughs> that kind of sucked. <laughs> I like overthink the turn and I was like, I couldn't turn and I was like, ah, shit, and I fell off the bike. <laughs> By that third lap, like your quads just feel like like lead. So you're just like, all right, just keep moving, just keep moving. And then my coach, of course, he's like, go, go. And he had his camera, and he was like, ah. yeah. <laughs> he's so funny. He's an awesome coach, though. How important was it with these two events to finish near the top of the line, or were you concerned every, at all? Every single workout is important. It doesn't matter what it is. It is crucial to be placing in at least the top 10. I was just talking to Bethany. Yeah. And she said she was um, in the lead for a little bit. Yeah. And she said you were just right on her tail the whole, the whole time. Well, actually, the first lap was definitely like me and Jamie. And then she kind of took over, I think, in the second lap. But then, like, I, I just knew I had to bring it home in the last in the, in the last lap. So that was um, definitely something that, like, I needed to make sure I was a little bit more conservative in the second lap so that I had enough energy to just, like, really bring it home. Did you see her crash into one of the turns? No. <laughs> I really wasn't focusing on what she was doing. Did she? Is she all right, though? She's totally all right. Oh, that's good. Are you going to buy one of the bikes? Um, No. <laughs> because then I've got to go and ship it back home. I'll just buy one in Australia. What are you going to do after the games? Do you have plans? Are you sticking around in the States? Or are you going home? Um, I actually am going to go to New York uh, for about four or five days and just, you know, go and watch some Broadway shows, just do the touristy thing. Then um, we're going to go the other way around back home. So we're going to go to Paris for a couple of days and then Dubai for a couple of days and then you just go home rather than flying from here. Um, all the way over to LA and then all the way back over to Australia. So we're kind of breaking the trip up into like eight hour increments in a way. <laughs> no, JB said yes. Okay, I just talked to him on the phone. Okay. Let me see verify. Three, two, one, go. Then if that's the case, I think we should launch him now for the warm up lap and set. But just let me just verify. Why do I keep seeing a priest here? He was here yesterday too. Uh, he DM'd me and said he'd like to be a pastor here. And I said, hey, I'm going to link you up with J Mac and J Mac can make a decision. J Mac said yes. And then I said, can you. Uh, all of all my sins? Yeah, that's Can you the one, clean right? me of all my sins? <laughs> you had him to clean you? Yeah, and I'm done. I'm good. Dude. I'm sin free now. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, up until now, you could start sinning right now. Uh, yeah, I'm sin free to here. Everything I did in the past is, is clear. So it's straight and narrow from here on out. I've been to um, all the CrossFit games. Yeah? And I've never seen a father at one of the CrossFit games. That's too long for a priest not to be here. And so I said, we got to get somebody here to. Tell me, how did that happen? I didn't even write an email, actually. I went old school, a real letter. I typed it, but I uh, wrote a letter. I said, these are the greatest athletes in the world. And if, if we're really all about total fitness, it's not just about the body, but the mind too, the soul. Because going to that dark spot isn't about having big biceps. I know dudes with big biceps who are scared of scared of the dark. And so it's about, you know, just providing for the whole, the whole athlete. And so that's what I proposed to Dave. I said, you know, we got chiropractors, PTs, massage therapists but no spiritual representative. So I'm just here for, for that aspect. Do you CrossFit? I try, yeah. I do CrossFit, yeah. And which, which CrossFit gym do you work out at? Uh, I was at Iron Hog CrossFit in Bentonville, Arkansas for the year. Now I've moved to a couple new churches, and so I'm doing the Josh Bridges Garage Gym kind of thing. 
At the end of a workout, like end of Fran or something, you hit the ground, do you ever accidentally take the Lord's name in vain? Not the Lord's name in vain, but I'll say other words that I probably shouldn't say. And it's not at the end, it's even during the workout too, Savon. Come on, man. All right. <laughs> you have no boundaries. No boundaries. No boundaries at all. I go, Dave, I go, did I just see a priest walk by? I've never seen a priest here before. He's here to pray for us. Yeah. <laughs> we need it. Did you pray with him? Not yet. <laughs> Get our group together. You've been to a lot of CrossFit Games. Was that one of the more interesting events that you just did in terms of the kind of event, the weather, the outfit that was too tight made you cramp? No. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's been way worse. I still think back to the half marathon row that started with the 2K. <laughs> what? Not everyone can eat a banana and look as good as Goodmanson. <laughs> he peeled it right down here. Just like... This will be interesting because we uh, had our dry run and it was dry. Each heat, I think, could potentially each be different depending upon how uh, torn up it gets from each group that goes through. Did you have any cramping? No. It's the first event. I don't know. I don't know why you'd be cramping like unless your swimsuit was too tight, like you said. I don't think it was the short's fault how bad I did. I think it might have caused a little bit of cramping. I was actually worried about that, but I went out way too hard. And that was, that was why I did so poorly. I think I PR'd my mile and a half, though, so that's cool. Someone said that we hit our 400 meter mark at like just over a minute. The fastest I've ever run 400 meters is like 59 seconds. I mean, it doesn't feel fast because you're in a group and you got, like, you're running against each other until someone says, 5.45 and you're at the mile and you're like, I've done wrong. That, that's, yeah, this is a bad choice. This is a 30 minute workout and I just ran a PR mile. I wasn't in the lead, but I was like only a few steps behind. We were running a 5.40 pace. Is that what's going on? It was stupid. <laughs> bad life choices. I immediately regretted my decision. Sub. Uh, four and a half. It's from the 100 pound dumbbell. We have a few of the AKs going around. Did a little bit too much. You have a little... Shiner, oh, fire. that was uh, it was an accident since 2006. Playing with fireworks. Wow, it's a powder. It's in there still. So the doctor wasn't wasn't that good. Makes you look tough. All right, welcome guys. So uh, today, what I do is just give you a little update on the safety brief for the course and stuff. Bike is unchanged. The course is completely different from yesterday. It does not ride the same. I tell you right now, some of the hairpins or the tighter turns you come in, you more than likely could wash out your tire. It's wet grass. Is Fikowski going to be good at this one too? Is he going to be doing some Fikowski shit? This one is probably better than a time trial for him. I would yeah. think so, yeah. Like he could probably maintain the speed he kept yesterday for three, five, seven rounds. Like he's very good at fitness, so he'll probably do well here too. He's very good at fitness. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Frazier seems a little aggressive this morning, so I think he's going to take some people out in this next one. I heard he's taking out Ricky. So, one, two, three. That's Smith. Gerard, Frazier, Smith. This drink is so tough. Squat. Do you want to sit on that? Scott, sure buddy boy. Squat. Make sure it feels right. Make sure the seat feels good. So right now, you're at good stability level. If you want to be able to generate a little bit more power, you can move the saddle up a little bit. All right, let me try this and then okay. I'll, I'll decide. Sounds good. Okay. Let me know. They're going to be riding Trex Excalibur 7 bikes, uh, 28 pounds. A lot of these obstacles are a little more difficult today now that we've had that sudden downpour. Here's what we want to look for. Do you understand how to use the bike, the gears, the way to switch, the way to mount, to dismount, that gear knowledge? Cole Sager came out with that football mentality, but he's now been passed by two motocross guys, Travis Mayer out in front, Rob Forte in second. Matt Fraser right there, not getting that bike up high enough, that could have been a really hairy situation. We've seen athletes either pick up valuable time and also lose valuable time on the sand pit. Gerard having no problem, smooth transition for him. Matt Fraser, who has regained second place ahead of Koski. And Fraser is going to pedal through this thing almost all the way. So smooth. Good transitions, they were able to plant their foot, hop on the bike, and get right into pedaling. As you see, Agidius is staying in that low gear. It's his first career event win in very impressive fashion. Ricky Garrard under 20 minutes. Oh, by the way, 
Second place for Matt Fraser and the reigning and defending fittest man on earth is in a great position after the morning here on the opening day. But Josh Bridges, not a good start in event one. Definitely not what he wanted to happen in event two. Third and fourth in the games last year, Bukowski taking the position. He's in ninth. That was fun. In eleventh, most fun I've had. George Sanchez, rookie the out of the West probably. Regional. Why? Why was it fun? Why was it fun? The veteran of the U.S. Yeah, Army will round out the top you know, fifteen of this event. Just changing the positions. When there's an the event like that, it's place so to hold and wet You've will. never seen the track. You don't know the distance. You're not Zach familiar Arketti with the bike. How do you pace yourself? And the rest of I the think, field making their way through. I think it was good that we got to test the, the, the track yesterday. So you were kind of familiar with the curves and you knew how long it's going to take. So it was good, in the event. good to do the and time Mitchell trials before. Be I was definitely faster today. I think like every round was faster well, than my time uh, trial you know, time. Because I was just too careful on the turns. I'm not worried about Ben. I'm scared to go faster. The question remains is... Yeah, I yeah. think it would definitely go faster if you got to practice exactly the same, it could be that, same but, track a um, couple of times, but I'm not worried about Ben Smith. Yeah, this is good. Two Mitchell years ago, I kind of ended up. The good thing is, is losing I position, kind of dropping have an down. To do this once the competition later, got just to really like, see how hard the more days I completed. So three, this year, I just try to, you know, stay at the top, get top ten finishes as much as I can, and. I think two South years ago Melbourne, I was still pretty Victoria, pretty new to the sport, so because of the injury I I wasn't able to train that much strength as I would have wanted to. But through that left turn I for the think final time I want to believe that I'm strong away. enough. He's going to be welcomed yeah. by Actually, at least that last lap right after the sand pit. I knew Scott was right behind me on my right, and he came off. I was like, oh, he'll probably get me on the run, but I can probably get him on the corners, which was what was happening. But on that last corner, he just totally wiped out. Did you hear him make any grunting noises as he went down? Like, Ooh. He makes a lot of grunting noises, so you kind of get used to it. You know, just it's like white noise. Did you beat Josh? Yeah. I really respect him, what he's done and what he does. I mean, he's got five years on me, and he's still out here kicking ass. So it's pretty impressive. But you did beat him twice. I did beat him twice. Do you know the term ghost ride? No. Didn't you ghost ride your bike at the finish line? It's where you jump off and let it roll. Did you like it? I thought it was Style amazing. Point. Yes. I think they gave you a couple extra seconds My because of it. I almost gave up though. <laughs> yeah. Did you ghost ride your bike? No, I did an endo at the end. So up on the front wheel. Yeah. That was my little trick. At least I didn't trash the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you win, you get to keep it. So. Really? Yeah. Yep. Well, you that's you what just, you should Dave just sell said. it. Did you win the heat? Win overall. Yeah. So, Jason Carroll was right behind you. Yeah. He tried to overtake me on the last. I don't know, it was probably like 60 meters though. That's a long stretch. Yeah. Did you laugh anyone? No. No, I didn't, no. Did you see anyone? So you didn't see any crashes either? No. And you didn't come Did, off did someone crash? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of people crashed. Mm. On, in the sand or? I think in the turns. He said that um, Scott Pancha crashed in one of the turns. Oh, really? Fuck. Yeah, like it, it gets hard when it gets too crowded. And then the tourist gets, gets hard. What's the next event today? I don't know. They haven't told you. I know it's at 5.45. No, 5.47. Do you know where it's at? Yeah, in the, in the Coliseum. Coliseum. We assume it's going to be something short because we've done two, two longer events. So maybe something similar I, to that 100% last year. Just something really fast. I assume nothing's exciting to assume, watch. Assume yeah. nothing. Assume nothing. Expect everything. That's right. Hey, can I chat with you really quick? I'm yeah, from sure. Cyclocross Magazine, actually. Of course. Sweet. And what's your Cyclocross name? Cyclocross Magazine? Yeah, yeah. We, we do the sport for, for fun. Okay. We often don't see <laughs> finishes like that in our sport. That was a pretty awesome yeah, finish. Yeah. Were you thinking about your gearing? Yeah, like I was thinking about my gearing and all the turns and to when coming off the turns. And what was your favorite part of the course? The sand, the barriers, the lactic acid? What was the best uh, part? Probably the locks. Fell four times? Yeah. I uh, uh, went into the fucking post. And it, twice I washed out. Is washed out a nice way of saying you crashed? Yeah, I ate shit. Four times. I got a battle wound. Check those. Ooh. So check that. So what happened? Is your hand shaking? Oh yeah, I'm shaking right now. So what happened? I was like fifth gear, wide open, you know, railing this rut, and then Cole Sager's big ass fucking comes in, just plowing that like, into the fucking post. Exactly what happened. Who would have thought he was a cheater? I know. And he presents like clean-cut dude. Yeah, bumping bars. It was good though. It's humbling being behind uh, 
Goodmanson and Egedius for probably the whole third lap until the end of it. You can hear them clicking back and forth on the gears and, and gaining. I'm just sitting there keeping in one gear and pumping, and that was just kind of like the separation of, of skill on the bike in that course. So I was just lucky enough to be able to pump at the end. But almost had a chain malfunction across, across that. Yeah, felt like the cool runnings part where the, the blade was coming off the bobsled. It was pretty close. Did so. you ghost ride your bike at the end like Goodman's? No, that was pretty cool. I was like, maybe I should do that. Nah, I, I just toppled over. It's badass. I like it. They're like, we need to tell the guys to stop doing that. I'm like, no, no, no. Don't tell anyone to stop doing that. That was amazing. Yeah, your bike did like another 100 yards before I fell over. Yeah, because I was like, I was gonna say it was a very graceful dismount. I wish it would have gone into the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> you can have it. Back on top of you. I felt it on the helmet. Yeah. I was like, that's fine. You I deserve it because I'm laying down right now. Man, being behind you guys for that third lap, I could tell ah, you guys were, you knew how to ride a bike. I left it in one gear the whole time because I felt like I was yeah, going to lose ground shift. Yeah. You're like, yeah. like, never in third right now and needs to gear down. Gear, gear down, man. I, could, I was figuring out. I thought I was in a higher gear than I was supposed to. You played it smart, yeah. though. Like, yeah, you kind of just, like, cool. you just yeah. dug right on our wheel and then had a little extra in the tank. That was I definitely made a mistake trying like to take the lead on the entire last round. There's like... No way yeah, my quad had anything left for that final stretch. I was hoping just to have enough speed going around the turn that you guys wouldn't be able to speed by. Like, yeah. How do you say your last name? Agidius? Perfect. Yeah. I've been saying it Agidius until two seconds ago. It's Agidius. I'm not going to lie. I noticed that. <laughs> as long as they get the E's, I know they're talking to me. Hey, next time someone interviews you with a piece of shit camera like that, you should tell them no. Uh, nothing. How much was that camera? And he's I like, know, $200. $400. Like, no, no, nothing less than. Forty-five hundred dollars. Who was, the guy? He was walking right in front of us, right before we started? Right? He's with like Cycle Cross Magazine. Probably I guess that gives you privileges he's, in this he's area. He's probably a good dude. I just mm. think uh, Goodmanson deserves like you know forty-five hundred dollars or more. For, you know what I mean? Otherwise, just really the low end. doesn't really yeah. go well. What? It, you should. Yeah, you're four hundred dollar camera. Yes. So we should have switched it up on that one. Goodmanson's been like, dude, I won the race. Where's the microphone? Yeah, where the fuck is the mic? Is this thing even record audio? So you just. Led the first lap, and then my calf and adductor cramped. What's an adductor? This beautiful thing right in there. The thing that your nuts stick to sometimes? Yeah, you know, when it gets pushed up against it sometimes. Especially when they say you can't wear bike shorts. Come on. Did you wear them yesterday? Yeah, I actually brought two pairs. One for yesterday, and one for today. Because they didn't say anything yesterday. And then they said we'd be DQ if we wore them today. Noah, how was that? I enjoyed it. I liked it better than the single lap. It was hard for sure, but I feel like I pushed it in the right places and I, I won up here. Did you see Travis? Uh, occasionally ahead of me. You guys have the same coach? We do. Who's that? Max El Hajj of Training Think Tank. I can't believe that's a coach. He is. Because he just never says anything and he's just chilling. He's got a smile on his face. He seems more like a bro when I see him hanging out with Travis. Like just busting balls. He's been my coach for six years. And so we always know just to keep it light, easy going. So it's very just. So the opposite of Noah. Noah likes really, really fucking intense and serious yeah. shit. All the time. Oh, I do? All the time. <laughs> I'm Not a little man. kid in a big boy body. Ask him whatever you want, man. He's a super genius. Eight plus eight. 37 24. No, not Nicki Minaj's measurements. <laughs> You see that crash? No. Well, Street and I got tied up and went head over heels, like right in front. This course, someone's got it. I think we both kind of landed on one shoulder, right back to our feet, and it was just like pick your bike up and go. It's fine. I spent like five minutes fabricating a pass. Finally passed him. Like the next corner, ate shit. He passed me, somebody else, and then Brent again. And I was like, oh. it's a lot of work right down the drain for one mistake. So I thought we had to ride through the lane three marker. And so he was kind of no going through the two, and I thought he was going to bang. Event, and I just started kind of closing in. And then we both hit a bump, and our handlebars just got tied up. And Ricky I think we just spun a tire performance went straight over. The What's the event going to be? Tonight? To um, yeah. I don't know. I hope it doesn't have a ton of legs in it, though. Uh, my legs are feeling pretty beat up from today. But I saw they had rings in the warm-up area. We might play with some rings. Maybe we'll see the handstand push-ups come back. Um, maybe we'll see dumbbell snatches and ring dips. 
You don't feel like after all this, it's going to be some heavy event? Like. For I you, think it's going to be a sprint. For you, this okay. is. I don't think it's going to be long. There's two long events in a row. Just the CrossFit so I think we're going to do something fast. How much like this has been. All the endurance athletes are loving their life right, right, right now, but and of course we're going to do something less than yeah, five minutes. Yeah, my motivation's through the roof. Thanks, guys. Is it hard to accept anything but first and second place finishes for you? Not anything but first and second, but. I think I, I hold myself to a high standard and I always have. I think that you just you want to be successful and it comes down to how you define your success. So like my for this the swim this morning for instance I didn't need to crush it, but I wanted to finish beat my finish from last year in the swim event, which was my worst placing. It's three hours until the next event. Good. What will you do for those three hours? I'm gonna go sit in the ice for a little bit. I said I had both my legs cramp up there on the first one, so I gotta deal with that. <laughs> well, eat something, sit nice, chat a little bit, brought my book, maybe I'll read a little bit. What are you reading? Uh, an Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. It's just kind of like a philosophy-ish kind of book and uh, it's just fun to escape this every now and then. Are you the astronaut? Well, no, it's written by an astronaut, a Canadian astronaut, Commander Hadfield, so. But it's, uh, it's a great there book. There was a Canadian astronaut? There was, I know. He was one of the, what well, there he, have been several, did but. Did he go into space? Yeah, he, his last mission was like 150 something days in space. He, he was the commander of the mission. He's fairly high ranking. I would say the highest ranking Canadian astronaut there's ever been. But yeah, he's a, he's a big deal. You could end up being the highest ranking Canadian CrossFit athlete ever. I currently am for men. Well, have been. Brent's going to have something to say about it this year, I think. And I mean, we're two events in. It's been it's fun so far. We've got a lot of weekend. I'd like to be the highest ranking CrossFit athlete, period, at some point. On planet Earth. Yeah, why not? You had a you had a collision on the bike course with Mr. Vellner. Sure did. Was that his fault or was that your fault? That was 100% his fault. <laughs> Ran right into me. Our handlebars just got tangled. I think he was trying to pass me. Just got a little bit too close. Is what it is. Did you end up beating him in that event? No. Oh. I think he knew the only way he was going to pass me was by taking me out. So he just swiped in there. And, How far ahead was he? How far ahead did he finish? Just right ahead of me. It was like it was pretty close, but my front tire was whole all the whole last lap. My front tire was all messed up. So, ah. Travis, yes. There's an athlete here who only has 2,000 followers on his Instagram account. Don't say anything. I'm gonna point to him, but just kind of be casual. And there will be another set of rings in front of him for his set of 11. So yeah, so yeah, there's rigs every, forward, every, every, every has five sets of feet all the same bar. What? Why is he covering his cock and balls? Must be scared about something. Five snatches. Maybe he said something to the bar. Does anyone need any advice of a we have in Iceland? Amanda. Amanda. You're going to be Amanda. Do you understand a word? I hear a lark. I hear it just ringing. What did he say? Is that are you excited about it? Something like you race through at the end. Like you're going to run to the end. On a bike? Yeah, I think, and then afterwards you have to hit a one rep max deadlift. You're going to portage the bike all the way to the water. What does that mean, portage? When you carry it over your head. I think it's a canoeing term. <laughs> This is a Noel Olsen workout. Talk to Noah. Like, when's the last time you've done this? It's probably been a little while. I've done yeah, variations of like muscle ups and squat snatches, so I'm excited. Will you beat these guys? Patrick, will you beat Noah in this workout? I could. I could beat a lot of people in this workout. I need to go well though. I feel like my heart rate has stayed under 120 for mm -hmm. once in my yeah. life. <laughs> You're like, I don't get this. this yeah, right? Like, this is, this is, this is awesome. what normal people feel like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I think there's like pros and cons of both because sometimes it's like if you don't work as much then it's like it's just like cross it, cross right. it or and whatever exactly. and it's just like okay what do I do now like mm -hmm. okay I go and I'm going to recover and, but it's nice to like have something to do. Have a distraction yeah. and it's nice because it's like my whole world outside of work is CrossFit, my boyfriend, my friends mm -hmm. like but then I go to work and no one at work does CrossFit so it's like two yeah. completely different yeah. worlds and like because of DR, it's like you learn how to respond in like emergency situations, and yeah, that happens yeah. a lot out here. <laughs> <laughs> like, stay calm. <laughs> be like calling you up. 
what did I just, this is what happened. What, 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 what. It's always running, like a girl that does a run, swim, run, yeah. with me, like the trial, and she was just cramping up so bad, like in her, they like locked, and so we were running, and she just stopped, and I'm like running, and I'm like, oh, she's still there. Where'd she go? So I like run back, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I was like, I wish I was like an ER yeah, nurse or doctor yeah. or something right now, and I just like, would know. Yeah, we like, like slowly like, massage her out, right. and like have some water, and yeah, and they was just, uh, no bueno. There's a banana. Yeah. yeah. Right. When we were like half a mile away from the gym, so I'm like, right. and it was her gym, and I'm like, I don't know how to get to your gym. She's like, here's the code, oh, no. whatever. And I'm like, I need, I know you need to be hydrated. You're not hydrated. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, I'm tired. I don't want to run back. But I was like, you got to run for her. You got to run for her. Oh. What's the bucket for? Chip timers. Ah. Let's roll. Ooh, baby. It's her last year, she's gonna retire competitively, but she's got one more, a little bit more business to take care of, so it'll be good. It's her ninth year, bro. I'm sure, know, she's tired. Crazy. She's just tired, man. Crazy. She's tired. And she's not quitting because she can't hang anymore, you know? It's but. just, it's just, she's tired, man. It's it's the demands of the sport now compared to when we came in. You could train for an hour a day, two hours a day, and you could go to the CrossFit Games. Now it's four or five hours a day, eat, sleep, breathe, and shit. So yeah, no wiggle room. There's, there's, no, there's no choice, and so, and when we're talking about a family and putting more focus on the business from her end, so. It's a good place to end, you know, nine years and eight Amazing. Eight, 32 eight, is crazy. eight times to make it to the game, so. What do you think the average life expectancy of, of a crossfitter, once they make it now? to a game? Yeah, once you make it to a game, once. I mean, I'll tell you like this, you make it once. It's, it's You ask anybody, you ask Brooke Ents, you ask girls like that. It's, you make it once, it doesn't mean you're gonna make it again. You gotta deal with injuries. I mean, it's tough to do what her and Camille and Rebecca have done and Ben, I think it's, I mean, it might be easier for guys, but I think it's gonna be a lot tougher for the girls just because, you know, they're coming in at 22 now. If Stacy would have had to train for five hours a day at 22 and kept that up for nine years, there's no way she would have stuck with it. So Stacy started when she was 24. And it's just it's tough, man. If you come in at 26, 27, you're going to have a harder time, I think, trying to make it to the games eight times. How old are you? 35 now. Shit, man. Damn, you got old. One. I've been crossfitting, doing crossfit for 10 years, man. So yeah, we're all, we're all getting older, Savon. Cotron, does it matter that it's a man's bar? Oh, it is? You're now saying it's a man's bar, yeah, sorry. Oh. I thought you knew that. Yeah, it matters, but like if it's the same for everyone, then... <laughs> We're good. The girls are coming out saying it's a men's bar out there. Does that affect you guys at all in your decision? How is it? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised that I did that. Yeah. The unknown and the unknowable, huh? Surprises. Is it really that much of a big deal that it's a man's bar? Yeah, I think uh, especially if you don't know, uh, that surprise could throw you off a little bit, but especially these girls with smaller hands, it makes a huge difference. Uh, especially strategy, if you go out thinking you're going to be hanging onto the bar and you pick it up and it's you know quite a bit thicker than what you're expecting, you're, it's going to throw you off. Does she ever train with the man's bar? No, <laughs> no. Axel bar or women's bar with no men's bar. Is she tripping at all? She seems to have handled it pretty well. No, this should be a really good event for her. Okay. Um, similar rep scheme to the one at regionals with muscle ups, and she set the event record on that, so she's looking forward to this. Awesome. Like, she's so strong, and I trained with her. She's so good. Go to 95 and up. Two more and be done. Focus. Okay. Oh. You got a Fraser! Yes! Fraser! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Can you get a picture with you? No. Nope, nope, nope. I like this one. I'm going to be smart. Uh, I've been fighting a little shoulder injury for the past couple months. So just the muscle-ups have always 
bother it a little bit, but I'm just gonna be smart from the beginning and break it up and be good to go. My quads are definitely a little tired after the bike, but I went home, took a little nap, took a hot shower, came back, and I feel pretty good, so. Good time to do that. Yeah, I did. We went, we left right after the briefing and ate some there and just chilled out for about an hour, so it was nice. Feeling better. Mooney, what's it smell like in here? Beer, beer, and icy hot. Did you almost stop and get a Budweiser? Yeah, I thought about it. Boost up the joints a little bit. Well, damn. You gotta jack the heart rate a little bit. You know. When you're doing that, what are you shooting for? Like a certain RPM or? No, I just close my eyes. Go by feel. <laughs> it's your best regional appearance ever, right? No. Worst. Last two years I got third, this year I got fourth. So I mean they're all comparable, but yeah, technically the worst. You had some good wins, didn't you? Well, I had some really good finishes. Uh, I don't think I won any events actually, but no, I was still really happy with my regional performance. It was, it was really tight from like one through ten was all really close the point spread. So I was still happy with my performance. And uh, those first two events, are you glad they're out of the way, or were they were they made? Uh, I was hoping to do a little better on them. Would have liked to capitalize on them a little more, but I'm still happy where I'm at. Ninth place. Uh, Stay in that top 10, stay in striking distance. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy still. The obstacle course tomorrow. Yeah, I like it. I like. I, I, I consider myself to be a relatively athletic, so I think I can do well on that. I think if you can go through the, the obstacle course uh, at a good speed um, without making any mistakes, without any falls or anything like that, I think uh, that'll get you through the next round at least. At least I hope. That's my hope. Is he going on, Brooker? No, he broke up the first set, right? No? Yeah. yeah. He's back up again now. Yeah. Gerard, do you have a plan for this? I do have a plan. Cool. It's just, I w <coughs> wouldn't say it's a winning plan, but it's my plan if I execute, uh, I should place well. <laughs> Not my place to try. What do you think about this one, Elijah? Pretty good, pretty good. Standard CrossFit, you know, back to the, to the basics. Have you, do you remember the last time you did Amanda? It's been a while, it's been a while. Uh, last, actually, last time I did it was in Cookville. Five years ago. Yeah. I'm well, let me not say Amanda. Amanda like as our ex. I've done it with heavier loads, like like Dave said, I've done it with 225, 185, stuff like that. Variants of it. Yeah. I haven't done just with uh, just Amanda in a while. Um, how are the how are the first two events of today uh, wearing on you? Like, oh, yeah, I mean I, I didn't think they would do that, but they're ta they taxi, man. Um, just fatigued, like bodies just drained. So, uh, recovery is huge right now, especially for tomorrow. The days look so long when you look at the schedule. Do they look crazy long to you also? Yeah, man. Yeah, they feel they feel long. Like uh, when they said this was been, I was at five. I was like, crap. Like, feels so like this is the end of the night, man. Like I'm worn out. But it's good though, man. As soon as the heat's over, we're out of here. You are. You get yeah. to go home. Back to the hotel. Yeah. Lay down, relax, get my legs done. Sorry, get something to eat in me, and I'm probably gonna be asleep by like nine. And what uh, what time you gotta be here tomorrow? 8:30 a.m. 8:30 a.m. Fresh and early, ready to roll. Man. How's the body? It's all right. Legs are still a little sore from all like the cramping and stuff, but I did uh, did a little recovery stuff to it. It's holding up. Did you feel any of that while you were biking? Yeah. Still did. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it was more just being like they were just dead. I cramped a little bit in my calf, but my quads were fine. I think it was the uh, the pants that I was wearing, because like everybody else said that they were cramping too from those pants. So they were just kind of dead. Still a little dead, but I think I'll be able to push through here. You love a muscle up, right? Yeah, I like bar muscle ups better, but ring will do, I guess. The last time you were at the games, out there, we'll there was that muscle up event, Start running out. and I believe you yeah. won it, and you and were the only person to do it all unbroken. Uh, I wasn't the only one to do it unbroken, but I did win. Yeah. Amanda's normally a good workout for me, uh, but I think it's a totally different workout than Amanda. It's more than twice the reps, so it's just, you have to be smart about the way you pace it, I think. Will you open up and do those muscle ups unbroken? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. <clears throat> Save your grip. Wait, I think Sam Briggs did it unbroken. Did you see that? I didn't watch her, no. Oh. The whole thing. The On her muscle ups? Muscle That's what she did, right? She was catching quite high, too. She was catching and locking out. Uh, Doing you, uh, Zeke muscle ups. 
I don't know, I think I think for me if it went unbroken on the muscle ups I would I would slow down the snatch too much. So we'll see how I feel once I get out there. But the plan is to break it up. So 13 and then I went two sets all the way through muscle ups. But the bar, I saw the bar. Oh, you did two sets of muscle ups all the way through. Yeah, 13 and broken, then two sets. That's really impressive, dude. Wow. Okay, cool. That bar. Appreciate it. You gotta stay on the bar. Okay. That's what the workout Cool. Appreciate it, man. Is it won or lost on the muscle ups or the snatches? I think the muscle ups. Yeah. 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 For sure. One day they're gonna get a real DJ. You don't like this DJ? I need some heavy metal music in my life. Heavy metal, just... I went to the West Regional, all they played was Slayer, Iron Maiden, and Metallica the whole time. It's like, man, I could have won this regional. <laughs> this music playing. This is a great fucking song. I don't know what you're talking about. This is good. Let me get with this. Sam Briggs. He's yet to win an event for the very first time here at the Alliant Energy Center. But third place, second place, that's as good as winning events at this point. Well, she's trending up. That's the, uh, that's the direction you want to go, right? Set number three here in Madison. It starts with 13 ring muscle ups. How about individual games rookie Jamie Green out in front? Several athletes still going unbroken, and Matt Fraser is one of them. Now, I usually say that that's a bad idea, but I will not say that when Matt Fraser does it. Now, we're moving into the round of nine. This is where Amanda traditionally starts 9-7-5. Briggs and Green both did five and four. I would not count out Tia Claire Toomey, who's going to be faster towards the end of these reps. The strongest in terms of raw power in the field might be Anderson, and this guy is not pulling any punches. Fraser basically staring a hole into Ricky Garrard at this point. He needs to hold off Fiona Koski too. Koski's sitting at first overall with almost 20 points between him and Fraser. And you just got a no rep there, and that's gonna be tough. Fraser knows what the time to beat is. He knows that he has to break eight minutes. And three of the biggest names coming into this year's competition are neck and neck going into the final round of five and five. Green might try to go all the way through it. This is a no rep for Briggs. Toomey will move into second. Jamie Green, she was the open winner in 2016. And she is your best three winner. Tell me about the interview afterwards. Is that nerve-wracking? Yes, fun, it's worse it than the rest of it. <laughs> Some of my friends, my good friends say at home, I hope you don't get interviewed this time around. You were just going. Jump off the rings, pick up the bar, jump off yeah. the rings, pick up the bar. What, is that just... Well, I thought if I just picked it up fast, then you can't really think about how tired you are. It's all perception. <laughs> was it just hideous out there? Was it just... Uh, near the end it was. It felt like it was going on forever. And could you see, at one time I heard the commentators say, oh, Jamie Green and um, Sam Briggs looked at no, each other. I, I didn't look at anything. Because oh. you can hear. You don't need to look. They're right. saying it all. What's tonight going to be like for you? Uh, just chill. Sleep. Straight away. Did you know that you were going to do this well at the games? Don't know. I wanted to, but we'll see. We've still got a few more days. You happy with your placement? Nah. You can always do better. Can you always do better? Nah. You want to win? Well, yeah, I mean, I think everybody wants to win. And if you don't do so, you like it motivates me. I think motivates you. Yeah, go a little faster. I finish this close. You know, I would never like give up or just slow down because someone did finish. I mean, the tallest guy isn't going to win that event, but I think a tall guy can still get a good placing. But someone my height that was just fitter and stronger version of me could still finish top ten. And if a tall guy can finish top ten in a short guy workout, you're laughing. So. Yeah, I try not to use it as a crutch, but I'm well aware when I go into a workout like that that I'm, I'm not beating Matt Fraser or Cody Anderson. Like, that's just a reality, just like I'm sure they know they're not beating me in a run, swim, run. There isn't a taller and fitter person than you. Oh. <laughs> I stopped complaining about my height 
two, three years ago when it's just like, Brent, man, like, it's not going to change. It's like complaining about the sun or the weather. It's just something you got to work with. Just something I got to work with. And yeah. I remember talking to Chad McKay. We were talking about weight. And he said, don't worry about it. As long as you feel light upside down and light hanging up the bar. You know, I mean, if you put on a two pounds of muscle in your lats and your delts, you know, that's, that's pounds well spent. What do you weigh? I weigh about 215. Wow. Um, the heaviest I weighed was near the middle of the open. I was about 219. And how tall are you? I'm six foot two, which is, you know, I mean, I haven't put on any weight since last year. I was 215 last year. Um, I think I look a little broader, but um, same amount of weight, which I'm super happy with because I'm definitely stronger than last year, which was the focus in my off season. So, is this fun? It is fun, man. Like, you know, I, I always like to train. I like to work hard. I always like to you know, push hard for a long-term goal, whether that's like saving up money for a trip or working hard to get a promotion or studying hard to get good grades or, or sports, you know, training for six months for one competition. That's what I like to do. And I found that that gives me the most joy, you know, the long play, the long con, as opposed to short, cheap thrills. And, um, you know, I'm good at this sport and I love it. And, you know, I've got a crew of people that support me. God, your parents must love you. <laughs> You're like the textbook child. <laughs> Thanks, man. They worked really hard and they retired when they're both like, both in their late 50s. Are you made in the shade. Are you already planning for your retirement? I mean, I'm not like specifically planning for my retirement yet, but um, I'm definitely money conscious and I don't just spend the money I make. him in your sights for the entire workout. I was hunting but I was hurting at the same time. Well, I was happy to hold on with what I had. But yeah, as I got to the sevens I thought I was home. Halfway through the seven muscle ups I was like, oh shit. Come on triceps. <laughs> hold on. Did you ride motorcycles? Yeah. I used to race uh, flat track and speedway so the circle track. Going around sideways. <laughs> do you still do it? Every time I went down. Nah. Either it's do it at home for fun, but I don't race or anything. I haven't ridden in about whew, six, seven months because it was, it was, Dad would come and kick me off. So you're getting too confident, you need to get off before you get hurt. <laughs> you like to swim up something and you didn't see your face. You didn't see my face? I was too far? Yes. But now you see me? Were you screaming his name? We sat two next to Jojo. See yo. Oh, did I go fast? Yes. I did good. Knuckles. Let's do it quick, or else I'm gonna get in trouble. What's up, my man? Yeah, man. Of course. Let me do one with this dude. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Got you, man. Let's do it, big guy. What's up, guys? Man, I don't know. I might have to run. I'm gonna get in trouble. We trouble you for early game. What's that? Yeah, I'll sign a card. We're trying to get as many signatures as we can on it. Anywhere on it. I don't even know what that means, but I sure am. Lots of people want your attention. Ah, got it. Wait, man, please get a Thanks, I really appreciate that. Yeah, man, let's do it. Last one, and I gotta run. Oh, okay. Awesome. Sorry, guys. I'll catch you in the weekend. Thank you all so much. Hey, what's up, man? Thank you. Run, Savannah. I was so happy. I was so wanting some girl to just to rip your clothes off. One time at a competition. You got your clothes ripped off? No, no, no. But uh, a girl started bawling her eyes out, crying. Like, I was just kind of like high fiving, taking pictures of the people along the sideline, and this girl like <gasps> panicked and started crying. And I was like, oh my God, what's the matter? What, can I give you a hug? And I don't know. She just freaked out. I was a little taken aback when I realized I had that impact on anybody but you. No one sees that though, it's behind the camera. Boom. The workout, did it go as planned? Um, I guess so. I would have liked to move a little bit faster. I mean, as planned, yes. Was my plan the right one? Maybe, maybe not. Um, thank you, buddy. But I moved up to sixth, so ain't so bad. It's a much better. I think we're in here. Okay. Much Let's better see. first day than last year's first day. I hate to think about other people, so I've really been trying to just like focus on Noah's game and what Noah can do, but you look around and all these guys are really freaking good. They're super fast and super strong. So I'm just trying to keep up and hopefully surpass. We'll see, see what happens. Sometimes I feel like I'm telling myself that stuff to make myself believe it and that I don't actually 100% believe it, but I'm trying more and more to just 
believe in my selfie. Thanks, brother. Yeah. I got them for later. You won an event your your rookie year. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. What's there left to do? <laughs> Hopefully uh, win some more and maybe keep myself in a good position at the end of the weekend. That's the main goal. Were you surprised that you won? I knew it was a good workout for me as soon as Dave announced it. But uh, yeah, I mean, my goal was top five in the in the event, and it's just a a nice, uh, I guess, added bonus that ended up being first. The snatches weren't heavy for you? No. Not even at the end there? I mean, no, it was never a weight issue. I'm sure everybody would tell you the same thing, that the snatches weren't heavy. It's just a little bit tiring with that many reps, 45 reps of uh, squat snatches. And I really like the workout Amanda, actually. The traditional uh, like girl workout Amanda is, is a pretty good workout for me. So I mean, you never know until you actually do it, because doubling the reps is you know, anything could happen when you double the reps, but I knew that I liked the movements and I knew that I liked it when Dave announced it and I was just hoping that it would go well and luckily it did. Could you have gone faster? No, probably not. I mean, maybe like a second or two, but for the most part that was probably about it for me. What's that smell? I thought it was you, to be honest. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I think there's trash. How old are you? 25. About to be 26. And how tall are you? 5'4". How much do you weigh? 170 pounds on a good day. And what gym are you from? Uh, I used to be at Cutthroat CrossFit. I just recently moved to Ohio now, so I'm no longer living in Colorado. Uh, and I'm starting, I'm trying to open up my own affiliate, which will be called Barbells CrossFit, if CrossFit uh, grants the affiliation. So that'll be good. How do you, what, what was the cause of the move from Colorado to Columbus? Uh, that's um, or Ohio. Grew, yeah, that's where I grew up. Um, so my family was all there. And uh, it was actually for the purpose of trying to open an affiliate. So. so what were you doing in Colorado then? Going to school. And did you finish? No. So I, was in the, I joined the military after I was in high school, and I did seven years in the military. So I had some college done, like online stuff, and then I got out of the military last October, moved to Colorado, did two semesters at UC Denver for architecture, and decided that sitting inside for being an architect probably wasn't really in the cards for me, so I decided to take a break from school, and uh, an opportunity presented itself to try to open my own affiliate, so I went for it. I was an undergrad for seven years. Oh yeah? I never finished. <laughs> never finished it? Seven years of school. It worked, everything worked out great. You're like Van Wilder, kind of. Aren't you too young to know Van Wilder? Don't be a fool! Stay in school! And you know, uh, Cody won the um, Muscle Up Biathlon. Yep. I remember. So, so. You, so you knew it was going to be... Yeah, I knew. There was a couple people I was watching. Cody, obviously. Um, Josh Bridges, always... Always a muscle up event kind of guy. Logan Collins, I knew would do well. Uh, and then obviously Matt Frazier, everybody's always watching him no matter what the event is. Who took second? Uh, oh, Matt Frazier did, and then and then Logan Collins, and then Cody. Fourth. Yeah, for Cody. Fourth. Yeah. He made me look bad. I picked him to win it. Uh, All right, thanks, brother. Yeah, no worries. Good luck. Thank you. Josh Dan Bailey said he's on the sidelines, and he goes, "Have you talked to Josh?" And I said, yeah. He goes, what's going on with him? I'm like, no, no, I haven't talked to him about that. Sometimes shit just doesn't go your way. Uh, you know, I got a long weekend. I'm never going to give up. Um, just going to keep fighting. Is your body good? Considering it's good. Best it's ever been. Your legs, your legs are tired. Wasn't my legs. There's something. No excuses. Life happens everyone. I'm going to take a step back. What are you going to do tonight? I'll go home. Oh, hydrate. Relax. You want to stop at the beer garden and have a beer? Sure. Why not? The fuck's the worst thing can happen, right? Those people are awesome. I get a lot of support. Sometimes I think it's too much you. Josh, can you get a picture with you? Sure, bro. Thanks so much, yeah, man. man. Of course. Is your camera gonna get ruined in the rain? For Josh Bridges. One. Nailed it. <laughs> you don't have to stay for all the heat. You just get to go home. I think so. I don't know. You think you can make it through here without signing an autograph or taking a picture? <laughs> no. I don't care at all. I think it's great. Hey, this is the right time, you know. Done with the events for today. Yeah. Borderline suicidal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah.
Thank you very much. So what should I tell Dan? Dan was asking me what's up with Josh. What should I say to him? Tell me. Everything's good. Actually better than good. It's fucking great. Did you read Ben Bergeron's book or something? <laughs> no, I actually wrote my own book. What's it called? Pursuing more excellence. <laughs> <laughs> Obstacle course tomorrow morning? Yeah, man, that'd be fun. Someone was telling me that there's actually technique involved in climbing the cargo net. Is that true? I don't know. Uh, some people do the flip thing. No, That's but I mean you... going up it. I think everyone noticed by now. You go up the vertical ropes and not the horizontal ones. Oh, like you're doing a rope climb instead yeah, of... Yeah, more, you get more like that. The ladder? That's what I've always been told at least. Because you were in the army. <laughs> nah, bro! That's a motherfucker. Seal. <laughs>